today on Divorce Court. I'm here because I feel like I won the jackpot when I got to meet you, but I'm a person with low funds. My relationship with Eric has been a huge fraud. I've come clean about my job, my money, that I don't really make a lot of. If she wants to be with me, she's gonna have to take me with my faults. Eric needs to stop lying about having a good job and actually get one. Amitri only has sex with me on payday. I feel like I'm the candy bar. If he wasn't so lazy and acted like a man, maybe he'd get more sex. I want the judge to force Amitria to make a decision. Can she deal with the real broke me or not? I want the judge to tell Eric that he needs to man up and be the man that he presented to me in the beginning. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Armitria Cozy and Eric Keaton. The two of you have been together for two and a half years. This is one of my favorite things. It's a before your vows. You two love each other, but you're not quite sure whether or not marriage is, is for you, so you've come here for my opinion. You have filled out my compatibility test and uh, given me your license with permission to tear it up. Should I think it? your union is ill-advised? Ms. Cozy, I'm gonna start with you. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why you love him, but you're not quite sure this is the right thing to do. All right, Joanna, I met Eric in a lounge about two and a half years ago. When I met him, he was jaw-dropping, took my breath away. He was just the right amount of chocolate, as you can see, mm -hmm. just how I like it. <laughs> he was dressed in designer from head to toe, looking real good. And he had a nice car, and on top of that, the conversation was just endless. So we start to date. He's taking me to five-star restaurants. He took me horseback riding. I would come over. He has rose petals laid out, candles lit, bubble bath. I mean, the whole, the whole night. Everything a woman could ask for, right? Right. Massaging my feet. I'm loving it. I'm falling. So your I'm... dating game is strong. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much very, so. Very strong. Very strong. I'm a gentleman. I'm from the south. Okay. So when did the the petals fall off the road. <laughs> <laughs> Not long after, he's giving me all his time and attention. I was loving it. But you could say he could have won Flexer of the Year because he was just a huge fraud from what I... In what way was he a fraud? He calls me one day, and I hadn't heard from him this particular day, all day. He calls me and says, babe, I'm in jail. And so I'm devastated, I'm shocked. I don't really know what to do. I've never mm -hmm. even dealt with a situation like that. He says, I know we've only been together for a couple of months. You can pull out if you want, I understand. But you know, I'm like, well, you've been such an amazing man to me. You know, I'm down for you. Did you I'm ask here. him what he was in jail for? <laughs> <laughs> That, to me, would be the first question. I mean, well, what it was, got you everything for? was just so sudden, you know what I'm saying? And I just wanted to him to know I got your... I got your back. I'm here to support you. Yeah, but what you. if he, we, you know, like, you know, hey, I'm a serial killer, you know? <laughs> Shouldn't you know what's up? It should have been one of the first questions on the list, I will say, but it wasn't. You asked what the charges are, but go ahead. <laughs> so I, I say, what do you need me to do? So boom, he gets right to it. I need you to put the money on the books. Do this, do that. I'm taking care of, you know, I'm taking care of it. And then this is when I found out more about Eric. Such as? <laughs> <laughs> um, I learned that he had lied about his age. He told me that he was 26. He was actually 31. All righty. On top of that, he told me that he was a businessman, a mm -hmm. professional businessman, but he actually worked part-time at Walmart. OK. <laughs> Anything <laughs> else? Everything else was according to Hoyle? Everything was cool? Well, that's what I had to ask. I was like, you know what? It's a lot to take in at one time. So you sure you got everything out? Is there any more surprises? Did you find no. about any other lies? I did. Like what? Well, we're gonna jump into, um, I was in the area one day. He's still in jail um, for about a week or so. And I decide, hmm, I'll just stop by, make sure his car's intact, his home's Okay, mm -hmm. so I walk up the steps, go to the door. I can hear that the TV's on. So I knock on the door, but no one comes to the door, but I hear a dog barking. Mm -hmm. And from my recollection, I don't remember okay. Eric let, having a dog. Okay, let's speed this up a little bit. There, he had someone staying in his house. Okay. 
So I'm waiting for him to call. I finally talked to him that day. Hmm, Eric, I stopped by, you know, just to make sure everything was good. Who's staying at your house? And he's, he tells me it's his sister. But we've been together for a couple of months. I haven't heard about a sister. So who was she? It was an ex. Okay. Is any or all of that true? Uh, for the most part, what she just said was partly true. I partly mean, true. Okay. Okay, with the age thing, I was 30. I wasn't 31. <laughs> but she did say you were 26. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so what else wasn't quite what it appeared to be? That, that ex that was actually staying there, it yeah. wasn't staying there. So, I mean, that was... You were with the ex? Not physically. Uh-huh. Uh. Okay. What else did you... Did, did you tell her you were a businessman? In fact, you were not? I mean, I work at a business. So, I mean, I am a... Bi <laughs> I, I, I'm a man. I'm a businessman. It kind of goes together, right? So, am I lying? Uh -huh. No, I don't think so. Uh -huh. I'm a businessman. Okay. okay. What do you want to say that... about what she said that's not quite what she represented. What's your point of view on all of this? Because to me, it looks like you lied about a lot of stuff. I, and I that did. you were putting on a front. I did, but that's my past, and I, I'm not a liar anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so once you were... Do you believe that you were forced to come clean? I, I was forced to come clean, but, I mean, it, it was something that I wanted to actually do for a long... I wanted to do that for a long time, so... But I was actually forced to come clean because right. she, she actually did find someone at my place. So mm -hmm. that's when I had to actually tell the truth and be honest. I'm going to ask you a question. And I, I'm, I want you to take a minute to think about it once I ask it. You find out within three, four months he's lied about who he is, how old he is, what he does, his relational situation with another woman, and you stayed. I want to understand what it was you were thinking and why it didn't lead you to leave at that juncture. You go through the phone, messages on messages from multiple women from the time I go to work to the time that I get home. All kinds of stuff. Oh, you should come over and cook me breakfast. Oh, you should just come over and cuddle for a while. Ms. Cozy, I want to ask you, when you found out he was lying about all these things, why did you stay? Because apparently you didn't know the guy you thought you had. That's true. But he had grown on me so much. I mean, he was treating me to some very nice things, just showing me something different that I hadn't experienced. And... Tweeting you to nice things, such as? Like I said, the five-star restaurants, just showering with me, just making me a top priority, like, he was going the extra mile. Things. But you know all that was a fraud, right? Because if, if you're working part-time retail like that, you can't afford whatever... What, I mean, was he... Was he driving you in limos? Was he... Well, he had his own really nice car. I mean, oh, but that was a rental, so... <laughs> Everything you liked about him was not true. But he had grown on me, so I just... I just thought it... What did you like be... about him that was real? He you gotta look good. at me to do that? <laughs> I mean, uh, Judge... She, yes? She's... I mean, I, I was a fraud. That's in the past, okay. but... We're living in the now, right now. Uh-huh. And if I'm a fraud, I think... She's a fraud. I mean... Explain that. Go ahead. Look at her hair. <laughs> it's not her. It's not her. what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. So, she's representing with a facade right. as you were. I mean, it, it gotta be even. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, if I... Like, you're saying that I'm a fraud, I think you're a fraud, too. But I... Because my hair looks nice? I mean, it's, it's not your hair, though. Mr. Keaton, you say that you believe that she's hiding you from her family. Why do you believe that? I believe that she's hiding me from my family because I haven't seen her family. I haven't met her mom. How long you been together? Two and a half years. Ms. Cozy, have you not introduced him to any members of your family within two and a half years? No, I have not. And, and, and why is that? 
I would come home from work. I'm getting up every day, going to work, coming home. The house is a mess, dishes piled up. I'm wondering, what's Eric's doing all day? What are you doing all day that the house is in shambles? You don't go to work every day. You only work part time. So what is it that you're doing? So one day I come home, his phone's laying around. I said, hmm, maybe I should just take a look, see what Eric's doing all day. I go through the phone, messages on messages from multiple women from the time I go to work to the time that I get home, all kinds of stuff. Oh, you should come over and cook me breakfast. Oh, you should just come over and cuddle for a while. All, it's all sorts of stuff. I got you, I got you. Mr. Keaton, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to respond. Is that ac an accurate recitation of what, what was actually on your phone or do you believe that just didn't happen or she misunderstood? Can I plead the fifth? <laughs> you, you may certainly plead the fifth. You may certainly plead the fifth. Since we're talking about parental figures, I do have a message from your mother about what she thinks of this relationship. And before I get to the compatibility test, and I don't even know if I'm gonna get to the professional love, but uh, uh, I wanna hear from her, and then I wanna hear your response to what she has to say. What do you bring to the table to her? I bring a lot to the table. Tell me what it is. I make her smile, I make her happy. I mean, like, that, that should count for something. You used to make me smile. Would you continue dating someone who lied about their age? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So, Ms. Cozy, the mother that you won't introduce him to has something she would like to say about uh, the, the possibility of your impending nuptials. Hi, Judge Toller. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of the show. I have no desire to meet Eric because he is not the man I envisioned for my daughter. He is not a provider and he isolates her from her family. He's content with the part-time job that he's working. He sits home and waits on her to do everything. She pays all the bills in the household. He waits on her to come home and cook and clean. And um, she's always coming to my home crying about what's going on and everything that I've heard has just been negative and that's just not what I see for my daughter's future and I just you know would like for her to be with someone who can provide for her and who can treat her with respect and treat her the way that she's supposed to be treated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Keaton, where did she get that wrong? I, I'm not even gonna lie, Your Honor. That actually hurt my feelings mm -hmm. because uh, that's a person that don't even know me. So, mm -hmm. how can you say these things about a person when you don't even know know them? Mm -hmm. It's always two sides to a story. It's mm -hmm. her side, my side. Well, I, and I want to hear your side. She says that you had a lot of women in your phone and stuff. You pled the fifth, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Thank uh, you. So, but that indicates to me that that hurt did occur. And um, is she the primary breadwinner in your, in your home? Yes, it's that, true. That, that's true. She's the primary so, bread, so breadwinner. So fidelity is not a gift of yours. Uh, economic support is not a gift of yours. You're no longer able to support the image that you initially created. What do you bring to the table to her? I bring a lot to the table. Tell me what it is. I make her smile. I make her happy. <laughs> I mean, like, that, that should count for something. You used to make me smile, and you used to make me happy. I read your compatibility tests, and uh, Ms. Ms. Cozy, you're 23, and you filled it out like a 23-year-old. You had no self-awareness at all, and because you said, I'm too independent in communication skills, when I asked you what's wrong with you, and when you said what's wrong with him, you said communication skills, financial stability, I don't think you really understand the depth and breadth of what it is to be in a relationship. And I think that that's how you got so easily swept away on the fumes of fakery. But that's what happened to you. And image is a false prophet. If you are, are, are consumed with the flowers and, and the car and the restaurant, and then all of that goes away, then 
infidelity comes and then I'm supporting him financially and I don't, you're still riding on those fumes, it's like heroin. Everyone says that first high is something and after that you're just chasing it. But you never get it and you get addicted and you keep doing something that's harmful to you, chasing the feeling that you had in the beginning and it never goes there. That's where you are. That's what you've done. And that's what I want to talk about. I'm not going to hear from you on a profession of love. Mr. Keaton, you are not a bad guy. Thank you. You're, you're adorable over there with your bow tie. Thank you. Uh, you're looking good. Thank you. I think, I think you took advantage of her. Uh, I think, I think you, you came in, you know, hard and fast with the good, you know, and you, and you swooped her up and then you got her to pay your bills and take, take care of your house and, and uh, maybe you are a bad guy. And I don't know. <laughs> I think I talked myself out of it. But I got something to say and then, and, and then that will be that. Lying about which of the following would be a deal breaker for you. Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. Ms. Cozy, uh, Mr. Keaton. Yes. Mr. Keaton, I'm gonna ask you to be a better person. I need you to be embarrassed that you're a 33-year-old man living off a 23-year-old girl. I ask you not to do as much as you can get away with, but do as little to a woman as you would want some man to do to a daughter of yours. Um, I think that her mother called in on the money. You hooked her? and um, she's stuck, and you're, you've kicked back because you've got her. And I hope you feel a little small about that because I think it was a small thing for you to do. Ms. Cozy, you need to listen to your mother. She's been out there for a minute, and she knows what's what and who's who. And what I'm telling you is you have no reason to continue to be with this guy because all of the reasons that you wanted to be him with him in the beginning are not real. I don't know what happens with women. We, we get a hold of any piece of a guy. You don't like anything about him. He's not doing anything for you. He's crushing your soul with what he does with other women. He's not supporting you. He's not who he pretended to be, but you yet, you still want to maintain that relationship. You are 23. There are a whole lot of idiots between you and forever after. <laughs> Don't get stuck with the first one and think like you have to make it happen because he's the guy that you got. That's not what 20 is for. 20 was like, ooh, made that mistake. Let me not make it again. Do you understand what I'm saying? Always ask what the charges are. Never be blind to who you're dealing with. And when he comes up not to be the guy that made you feel good in the first place, realize that he's not a guy that's ever gonna make you feel good. You've got to really be your own woman. Step out on your own. It is better to be alone and happy and on your own than making it work with a guy who just isn't working for you. You with me? Thank you. I'm going to take this marriage license and send it through a paper shredder. You need to walk on, my sister. Walk on. You hear me? Yes, ma'am. This matter is adjourned. One of the greatest lessons that I've learned from this experience is to just, when someone shows you who they really are, believe them. Don't ignore the signs and the red flags. You just think with your head, not your heart. I'm speechless that she actually want to move on because I thought coming out here would actually get us in a better place. I guess it actually hasn't, and I hope that she changes her mind in the future. <laughs>